Hi guys, hope you're well. And I just thought I'd share my experience of having a hair transplant. I am now five months in. And as you can see, you'd probably argue that it's looking adequate. And I'll tell you what it is. It's looking a hell of a lot better than last month, the month before that. And then the previous three months before that was utter hell, to be honest. <music> It's okay operation, it's a long day, it's quite a painful experience to start with, but after that it's the three months of looking in the mirror thinking, shit, is it ever going to grow? So I've got my phone here, I've got some photos on there and I'm just going to be talking you through the day of the process, what happened in the last three months and up to date circumstances. So as you can see, my hair is quite decent and if you look at these photos, this was uh, a couple of months ago which you can see a little bit coming through just about and then this was taken maybe a month ago. And now if you look at this comparison of the two together, I think it's a massive difference. Obviously, the most important thing you've got to remember, guys, is that the hair that you originally had in the middle or around the size or whatever, that hair is always going to be thicker than the hair transplanted. They just can't recreate that density within a square centimetre or whatever it is distance. It's all, it's just never going to be as compact. You do need your original hair to blend in and comb over. And that's kind of what I've got going on now. If you look closely, it's you know it's only been growing for two months, so it's it's quite thin on its own. I won't be able to get away with it without my other hair, unfortunately. So it's okay on its own, but together it's a hell of a lot stronger. And the only thing worse than having a receding hairline is having two other fuckers. <laughs> so one receding hairline is bad enough, but when you've got two, you've still got to manipulate your hair in a certain way when you look in the mirror. Uh, in the morning, I used to get up and just brush my hair to the side one say, wait, but now I can't really do that. I have to look in the mirror and concentrate a bit more because you can still see it's a little bit light, it's a little bit thin on the ground and it's not quite there. Now, you know, in six, seven, eight month time, that might be completely different. And if I'd have thought about it and read into it a little bit more, I might not have done it because it's been quite a lot long, drawn out, emotionally pain, painful process as much as anything. But then the full results don't develop for 18 months. That is a hell of a long time before you can go back. I don't think you can go back and complain. It is what it is. But yeah, it's a long time to wait for something to sort of come into fruition. So ultimately, you've got to be prepared for the wait. You've got to be patient. You've got to ride it out and do what you can in the aftercare process. Now, this is my hair when I first, before I went into the operation, you could argue it's, it's relatively all right. I've got quite a lot of hair in the middle. But you look in the mirror and it's it's that triangle there, that bit there that I just I used to look in the mirror and hate it. And I wanted it sort of clearing up. So I, I desperately needed it clearing up. And when I found out that it was only £2,000, British pounds, the price of a, an half decent watch, I thought I have got to go for this. So I, I, it is a lot of money, but it's not as much as I thought it was going to be. So on the day of the, the uh, operation, I drove into Manchester City Centre and <laughs> I walked to the place, got in there. And they shave your head, put you in a pinny with your ass hanging out, and you just... I looked like a refugee, to be honest. I looked absolutely horrendous. I looked like I'd got a terminal disease. And <laughs> my ass hanging out just for extra shame. And they lie you down on a sofa bed. And the reason it was so cheap is because you've got the main doctor, the second in command, and then you've got a couple of nurse lackeys that sort of do the majority of the, the tedious work that is involved. And that's why it's a little bit more discounted. It's not the same premium doctor doing the whole process. Uh, fine by me. It's, it saved me a hell of a lot of money. They shave your head. They put you in the, the table, lie your face down. And then two these nurses just start injecting the back of your head. And it must have been about 10 at least 10 to 12 injections on each side of my head and they were not pissing around they were stabbing it in there and my legs were going like this and I started shaking and they're like oh can you just calm down and sit still I'm like easy for you to fucking say the most painful experience I've ever gone through it was horrendous it could have only lasted for 30 or 40 seconds but it felt like a lifetime it was really genuinely horrible but you get past that you're singing in cloud cuckoo land you don't <laughs> you're awake you're conscious but you cannot feel a thing and they said, right, second in command comes in. And oh, just before that, the doctor went through a process of where your hairline is going to be, blah, blah, blah. Then they take you in, shave you, inject you. Totally painful, totally horrible. But then the pain goes away and the guy starts drilling out the follicles in the back of your head. And you can hear this zzz, zzz, zzz. You can't feel anything. 
But just take a look at this video, guys. This is the aftermath when I got home that night. It is just utterly, utterly horrendous. And the, genuinely, the kids didn't want to speak to me. They didn't want to look at me. I actually scared them. And I can see why. I mean, the back of my head is just pure, pure pain. It's horrendous, horrible thing. But actually, during the operation, when he's doing it, I fell asleep. He's injecting me that many times, hundreds of times on the back of my head, and I fell asleep, and he just had to nudge me awake. Andrew, are you there? And I'm like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Can't feel a thing. It's brilliant. So what they do, they take all the follicles out. They wrap them in cotton wool. This is a picture of it, totally blooded, stained, wrap all my hair back there. Then they sort of bandage it up, give you some lunch, and for £2,000, I'm expecting a little bit more than a crappy Tesco meal deal for three quid, but that is genuinely what I got. I had that, sat in the room on my own for 20, 30 minutes. Then they come back in, sit me on my front, and then the doctor comes in, the main guy, and he starts injecting, uh, sorry, cutting holes, basically, at the top of your head where the hair follicles are going to go. So he makes incisions, and it's hundreds, if not thousands, of incisions. And all you can hear is this little... <coughs> and it is, it's the skin on your forehead tearing, but you can't feel a thing. You're just completely oblivious. Away with the fairies is making all these cuts in your head, blood's rubbing down your head, they're wiping it off. He goes away. Then the two lackey nurses come back in and they're just like like on a factory factory line somewhere, just absolutely smashing these follicles in. And every five minutes you can say, new thing, please, new things. And they get a new set of 10 and then they smash them in. And that's it, basically. The, you can tell they're just dying to get on. They try to rush, get home, get it done. Uh, that happens, they wrap you up and in the end you look like this. Now, you're in pain, it's starting to die off, you're hungry, you're starving, you're tired, it's been a hell of a long day. You look like that, and then they say, right, see you later. And like, what do you mean? Right, you can go now. This is at half four, five o'clock in Manchester City Centre. The biggest walk of shame I have ever experienced. You can't wear a hat, you can't cover up. No umbrella, no nothing, just utter shame on my face, walking through Manchester City Centre, getting to the car as quick as I can. I could feel people's eyes burning on me thinking, who is that fucking freak? It was horrendous. Uh, I got in the car, looked in the mirror, and I can see why it was a scary experience for the people of Manchester. I was starving. I went to McDonald's drive through and I, she, <laughs> she handed me the cheeseburger. She put the bag out and just had a double check, like, what the fuck's up with you? <laughs> it was uh, an embarrassing, uh, humbling experience. I got home. I was drained. I'd already booked two days off work. I thought it was a minor operation. It's not, guys. It will completely, completely knock you for six. So you get home. I think I had to rip the bandages off the side of my head, which was an incredibly painful experience in itself. Then I had to sort of rinse it off gently. And then that is where the real pain starts. You have to, you have a little bottle of solution which lasts for about two days and then you just have to fill it with water. And the idea is you have to spray your scabs every 20 minutes every single hour except for four hours when you can sleep. That's right, you can sleep for four hours a night and you've got to be upright at all times for the first week. So I got on the couch back at home, spraying it every 20 minutes, zonked out, and then for the next two days, I was like a zombie. I couldn't get off the couch. I'd never watched so many old films or documentaries in my life. I just didn't budge. And you have to spray it every 20 minutes. You're upright in bed like that. You can't really sleep properly. You're super conscious that if the scabs do dry out, the hair follicles are going to pop out and you're going to waste your money. So that thought alone keeps you awake and keeps you spraying it. You keep spraying it, keep spraying it, keep spraying it. Uh, I made the mistake of taking my headband off a couple of days early because it was felt dirt and I was sick of it. But then the solution that they inject into your head to swell it up so they can inject the hair in ran into my face and I looked bald, scabby and a little bit chubby as well. So <laughs> I just, I absolutely looked horrendous. I looked really ill. I felt really ill. And that entire week was just spent at home on the couch doing nothing, spraying solution. After about a week, you can stop doing the solution. It dries up a bit and I managed to go out for a walk with the kids somewhere where no one would see us, bit of fresh air. You start to feel okay again. Then a week after that, I worked from home so no one could see me. Then after two weeks, you can wear a baseball hat. And that's what I did for three months. And it was a genuinely painful, long experience. The novelty was good to start with, but after that, it's just you just get sick of wearing a hat and covering your hair up and feeling conscious of yourself. Uh, so once the scabs sort of died off, your hair actually starts to grow. And you think, frigging bonus. And I think I've got a picture of myself here 
where my hair is just starting to grow and I actually felt a little bit okay about myself looking in the mirror. Don't get excited. That lasts about two weeks to a month and then it all falls out. And then you're just left with like scar tissue and red hair around the front and not enough hair on your top originally to, to cover it out. This is me after about, let me look at the date here. Sorry, bear with me. So that's me after about three or four weeks. You can see it's a really scabby red area. There's no way of covering it up because my original hair hasn't covered it up yet. Then it starts to grow a little bit more and you're okay. But the biggest thing for me that after three months, that three months, you can't go in the sunshine, you can't go swimming. You can't, there's a lot of rules you've got to follow and you follow them because you're shit scared your hair's going to fall out or not work. So after that, I did get a bit of sunshine. I went to Turkey for a holiday and I think the vitamin D sort of kick-started it. The doctors did say it would happen after about three months. You'll start to see a bit of growth and that's exactly what happened. But you just don't believe it for all that three months. It's horrendous. A bit of sunshine, came back from Turkey and then I just stopped wearing hats. And now if you look back at me when I come back from Turkey, actually... I've got a little bit of a tan here on this photo. And if you're looking closely, the hair, it's not that covered up. My longer hair isn't covering it up. There's still a lot, long way to go, but you feel a le hell of a lot better because there's a little something there. And then that photo was exactly a month ago. And here we are after five months. And this is what I've got left. It, it's not ideal. It's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than what I had. And I never thought I would get to this stage in the first place. So... It's a result, there's a long way to go, but if you feel your hair, you can feel little sharp bits where the brand new fresh hair is coming through. And hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to wear my hair in some sort of style. I just put a little bit, of, I haven't got anything on it today, I've just washed it. And all I do is just, I've left it in this state so you can see what it's like. And yes, I can get away with it. I went out for a night out with the lads last weekend. I walk around now and I'm not that conscious of it, but... Yeah, it's not perfect, perfect hair that I'd hoped for, but there's a long way to go for that 18 months before it is there. Anyway, guys, just a brief update of what happens on the day, the torture that you feel in the three-month build-up. But once you start to see a little bit coming through, it's happy days. You do feel better about it. And you've got to use caffeine shampoo every day now for the rest of your life. And I've got to use biotin vitamins every day for the rest of my life. Small price to pay. The shampoo, shampoo cafu, uh, cafe, uh, caffeine shampoo, sorry. Just a small amount. Lather it in, leave it for two minutes. I usually wet my hair, put the shampoo on, then do a bit around the house before I get in the shower just to let it soak in properly. And then there is other things that you can buy on top. I think Regain for men is like a spray that you can put on. And then there's other tablets as well that you can take. I haven't gone down that route yet. I'm going to see how it pans out for the next few months, but I probably will buy those things just to give myself every opportunity of having a full head of hair. So I hope that's helped, guys. I'll be doing another update in a couple of months. But yeah, it's coming through now. It's a hell of a lot better than it was. In fact, if you look at a video, that I, my last video I posted about a Braemont watch, I posted it this week. and that I actually filmed that four weeks ago. And there's a massive difference in what my hair looked like then and what it looks like now. So yeah, it's a hell of a lot thicker. It's a hell of a lot stronger. Uh, it's just a case of buying your time, being patient, I think is the biggest key through all out this. Anyway, guys, hope that helped. I'll see you in the next one.